Okay, hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, just doing my Instagram as well as Facebook and recording this for YouTube, getting technologically advanced here. Um, this is a big week in the United States where tomorrow is voting day. And um, I thought I would chat a little bit about um, like your choice, your choice, having your voice heard, and then relaxing. Because there's a lot of anxiety that's going on. Who's going to win and what's going to happen. And when we go into the what ifs, we start creating all this anxiety and stress and things that aren't real yet. Like we don't have to deal with it yet. So what if we just relaxed and, you know, you do your voting and you relax, you've done your part. That's all you can do right now. And I know with so many people <laughs> around the country being stressed out, it's hard to relax. It's hard to just go, okay, let that stuff roll off your back. But that's where some of these tools from Access Consciousness come in so handy because when it's not easy, you can use the tool to create more ease with whatever you're dealing with. <clears throat> so um, one of the first tools that I like to share is the expanding exercise. And the thing is, most people think that their mind is them or maybe their body is them and that's it, but you're actually a being, an infinite being, and you have a body. So there's like a couple of things together and the mind is a whole different, it's a whole different thing. Let's put the mind aside for the moment. You can still perceive and know and receive and be without your mind, believe it or not. The mind creates all kinds of tangles and troubles and anxieties. So let's just set that aside and look at you, the being, and you, the body. So if you close your eyes and you look for the outside edges of you, the being, what do you notice? As far as you can go in all directions, there you are, right? So you're not actually small and you're not the size of your body. You're actually way, way bigger. And when we start to flex those muscles of expanding, it creates such a beautiful release of anxiety, of doubts, of fears, of stress. It just naturally occurs as you expand. One of the things that I like to share about the expanding exercise is like, let's say you're in a small enclosed room with a mosquito buzzing around, like in a closet size. And the mosquitoes, you know, and you're like, oh boy. Like that mosquito is a big deal because you're in a small space and you, you pretty much can't not hear it. But if you were in a football stadium sized room with that same one mosquito, no big deal, right? So if you, the being, would choose to be expanded, all your problems, issues, worries, fears, anxieties would become like a tiny little mosquito in a football stadium of space. Are you willing to play with that and try that? So let's just do it now. Relax. 
and sit back if you can. If you're not driving your car <laughs> or doing something that you need to keep your eyes open, close your eyes. Take a breath and just be present. Lower any barriers you have for protection, the barriers that are always there, that you've gotten used to, and expand out filling the space of the room that you're in. And then go beyond the walls, the ceiling and the floor, expanding in all directions. <sighs> Noticing how when you expand, your body starts to relax more. And keep going as far as you like. It's an adventure in exploring space. You can expand through your neighborhood, through your city, through your state, through your country, other continents all the way around the earth and beyond into the Milky Way and beyond. And there, do you notice how quiet your head gets? Do you notice, like it doesn't take that long, it just took a few seconds. And it's like, ah, oh, no more thoughts in my head. No more niggling, you got to do this and anxieties and worries and all of that stuff. It just goes away. <clears throat> so and from this space, this is where you can start to create the things that you'd actually like to have occur in your life. Because from here, you're not being at the effect of your mind and your worries and your fears. You're actually being the space of you, the being. So what would you like to create? What would you like to have show up in your life? What would you like to invite in? What would you like to let go of? Just allow yourself to ponder. What if you didn't have to write down a list of 27 different things or make it a to-do list or make it something solid like everything else that we've learned to do? What if we could just be this spacious possibility and curiosity. Oh, it's making my computer do some weird things. Oh, that's interesting. And just stay in the curiosity and allow thoughts and ideas and inspirations to come to you. It's sort of like those, the people that like to journal. You start writing and you get all the thoughts out of your head and then you start writing things that are coming in once your head is clear. Right now our heads are clear. So what can come in? What excites and ignites you, the inner sparkle? And even if you don't have words for it, you may just get a sense of lightness, bubbling, excitement. And when you go about your day, the rest of the day, if anything that shows up for you feels like that lightness, that bubbly, sparkly energy, you can choose that and see what it creates. 
So this is what we call following the energy, following the lightness. When something feels light and you choose it, it creates more lightness in your life. And if something feels heavy and you choose it, it can create heaviness. So what if you follow the lightness? <clears throat> so staying expanded allowing your head to be spacious it's an art you know I remember when I was in middle school I used to daydream and ponder things in class. <laughs> and I'd be like reprimanded by my teacher, you know, stop being a daydreamer. Do this work. <laughs> and like we get trained out of creating in this magical way. It's made wrong. So let's maybe re-engage that possibility. What if it wasn't wrong? I still got all A's in school. What if you can be a daydreamer and still complete the tasks that are required? So everything that you have decided about how you have to be solid and serious and have your to-do list instead of being spacious and playful and open to possibilities. Let's use the access consciousness clearing statement and change all of that stuff. So all of that, let's destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, Ovads and beyonds, oh, and bases and beyonds. <clears throat> That's the access consciousness clearing statement. And um, you can find out more about it on my YouTube channel. Oh, so it, it's interesting. As we are the creators of our lives, we can also uncreate things. And it gives you that magic wand. So using the access consciousness clearing statement to uncreate things that no longer serve you and to open up to the energy, the space, and the consciousness that allows you to create things with ease. So it works in both directions. So everything that doesn't allow each one of us to have ease during this election time in the U.S. for the next few days while everybody's going crazy, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, hovads, bases, and beyonds. Wow. <laughs> wow yeah it's funny people are talking about it and they're like who are you voting for and what do you think of the election and all of this what if you gave yourself permission to say I don't really like to talk politics and just let it go don't get into it don't fight don't align and agree or resist and react. Like it's all just an interesting point of view anyway. So everything that doesn't allow all of this political stuff to be an interesting point of view for you, woo, let's destroy and uncreate all of that. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, bovads bases, and beyonds. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of energy on that. Mm. We are the ones that get to control ourselves and our points of view. And so this next tool, interesting point of view, will allow you to have just that. So whatever somebody has a point of view, whether they're projecting it at you or they're expecting you to agree with them or expecting you to fight them, to disagree, either way, you're stuck in this tug of war. But you can choose to be this space, like the expanded space of interesting point of view. Well, interesting that you have that point of view. Interesting that I have a point of view and they may be different or they may be the same, but it's just interesting. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's not good or bad. Once we get hooked into those judgments, then we have to fight for the rightness of our point of view and the wrongness of others. And that is an energy suck. And that collapses that space of being. As soon as you go into judgment, you have instantly shut off your space, your capacities, your potential. It's like, boom, really quick. It's like a toggle switch on your phone, you know, turn off, do not disturb. <laughs> Excuse me. So um, interesting point of view really allows you to be aware of what other people are choosing, be aware of your own perspective and recognize that it could be different and that's okay. And what if nobody's right and nobody's wrong? You can choose what you want to choose. Oh, I love the little hearts. Thank you. <laughs> it does take practice, though. I'm telling you, I have learned this tool for, well, 21 years. I've been playing with the access consciousness tools. And um, it's not something that comes like that. I mean, sometimes it does. And for certain points of view, you're like, oh, yeah, whatever. But there are other things that we are really um, vested in being right. We're vested in being right. And so we won't let go of it. <laughs> An interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And taking a breath, interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Interesting point of view. I think I'm right. Interesting point of view that I think other people need to have the same point of view as me. <sighs> interesting point of view that they have that point of view and you get to this space where it's just oh okay this is what I perceive this is what they perceive all right no problem there's no charge on it anymore even if somebody's choosing something that is the polar opposite of what you would choose that's their choice that's their choice. Everybody gets to choose. And we can choose to not be at the effect by choosing beyond the judgment, by choosing to be spacious. And choosing to be interesting point of view. And when you get hooked in again, because you most likely will, <laughs> you just take a few moments, expand out, say interesting point of view, I have this point of view, interesting point of view, they have this point of view, take a few breaths, and you will eventually get to that space again. If you need to go for a walk in nature, move your body, breathe some fresh air, do some yoga, whatever it is that allows you 
to dissipate the charge. It starts with recognizing that it's your point of view fighting for the rightness or the wrongness of <laughs> that that's where it begins. And I feel like a lot of people tend to do this as a mental game. I will say, interesting point of view, I have this point of view, pock and pod, you know, 10 times, and therefore I am over it. But it's not really how it works. It's this energetic thing. And you know, when you still have a charge, even if you're hiding it from yourself. That's why in part of the clearing statement is the POVADs, the points of view, we avoid and defend. They're sneaky. We avoid all kinds of things and we defend our points of view and we hide them from us. So running the clearings, moving your body, allowing the energy to shift however it works for you, and then checking in and noticing. And it's amazing. Like the shift between having a point of view and being in resistance or feeling like you're right and having to like hold on to that and not having a point of view, just being like, okay, we differ. How does it get better than this? And what else is possible? It's dynamically different. Even if the situation doesn't change, when you come out of judgment of you or anyone else as a whole different space to live in. So I invite you to play with these tools, especially over the next couple of days. I know the country is doing a lot of judgment and freak out, but we could just be like, wow, interesting choice they're making and what else is possible? And what if you choosing to be interesting point of view and expanded space can create a ripple effect of peace during this whole election thing? What gift can you be in your neighborhood and in the world? Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you have an amazing week. And, oh, um, in a couple of days, I have a one-hour Zoom call with a friend of mine about um, using your capacities beyond just the emergency situations. So check it out and come join us. And find out what else is possible. Thanks for watching.